Well, I just got this Edimax N300 Universal Wi-Fi Extender off of Amazon.com and you can actually get this for 20 bucks with free shipping and they say that it's a wireless BG and N Wi-Fi range extender at 300 megabits per second. That's a bit optimistic, but I got this mainly to be able to extend the wireless range of my wireless network because the signal doesn't carry very far across the house because I have one of those newer Wi-Fi routers that stupidly they decided to get rid of external antennas and everything is internal now which degrades and negatively affects the signal performance so this device is supposed to cure that and I just picked this up uh, there's a couple of LEDs on the front you have one for uh, to let you know if you're connected to your original host network the one you're going to be repeating an icon that lets you know that this is actually actively repeating the power indicator WPS if you're using a Wi-Fi protected setup so you don't have to enter in the passphrase into here and then this indicator for the built-in Ethernet port because this can also double as an Ethernet bridge a wi wireless bridge for devices that don't have a wireless card so this device behaves much the same way as any wireless ex range extender, any cheap wireless range extender, and that it actually doesn't rebroadcast your original host network's SSID so that you can roam freely across your home and you'll still be connected. It'll just hop over to the repeater flawlessly. This one, how this performs is it just rebroadcasts your host network under a separate SSID which can be troublesome for some folks who like to roam without having to you know, mess around with the wireless settings which I happen to be one of those people. I thought this was going to rebroadcast the original SSID and I would only have one wireless network to connect to. Uh, this isn't the case with this device. This, uses a, this will broadcast your network and use a separate SSID, a wireless network name, so you'll have to choose that from your computer's wireless list when your uh, original host network signal strength starts to degrade and you want to connect to this device. But it's really a simple device. There's nothing really to it. Edimax N300 Wi-Fi extender. And there's a, a slew of you know cheap Chinese knockoffs on eBay that have no brand name and I'm a bit hesitant to try them out because there's no guarantee, there's no warranty. Uh, these are usually the ones I keep coming across. There's just no brand name, it's just whatever they decided to call it. This one, US Plug <laughs> Wireless and Wi-Fi. I guess that's because it's made for the United States. That's really the only differentiation. There's just a bunch of these ones and they don't even have a brand name on them so I wouldn't really trust them so I got this it was a couple more dollars I mean this one 15 bucks from Hong Kong but of course the shipping would take forever and this is straight from the United States for 20 bucks and free shipping from Amazon.com so you set this device up actually you could actually uh, just use the WPS button on here and on your router to configure it automatically and here is that built-in 10 100 uh, Ethernet jack which allows you to hook up any computer that does not have a wireless card and you could use this as a wireless bridge while also having it be a wireless extender so it serves two purposes and this model has the United States plug it's not polarized and there's a physical power switch here on and off and then over here if you actually look on the bottom here there's an address that they put here. It says HTTP extender BOEAC2. And that is how you actually go about configuring this extender. You uh, go ahead, you turn this on for the first time, and you connect the Ethernet jack up to your computer. And in extremely small letters, uh, you can see it uses uh, 5 volts at 1 amp. It's got an internal, I guess, DC, uh, AC to DC adapter built into it. And it also lists the IP address for configuration and the username and password. This is actually the older version, version 1. Uh, the one that's on Amazon.com that they're selling now is version 2.0 so I'm guessing that there's some additional features or maybe they're just claiming it has a, a better, uh, better speed but this does just fine for my needs and it was just a bit cheaper because it was a refurbished unit. Okay, I have the Ethernet jack plugged in down here. The LED lights are coming up. Let's plug this into my computer now. Just plug this in like so. We have some activity. 
and it's obtaining an IP address from this device. Alright, it says that we are connected, so we should be able to input either the 192.168 IP address or that URL that I read off earlier. Let me try the IP address. Okay, apparently that's not working, which is interesting. They list that as how you're supposed to configure it, so let me try the uh, address instead. Yep, just entering in that right into the search bar that went up and brought this. And it just tells you that the default username and password is admin and 1234. Okay, so they have something called IQ Setup, which is how you're intended to set, set up the uh, wireless repeater functionality. And it lists all of your wireless networks, or at least ones that it finds there. The channels they're on, the encryption that's used, and the signal strength. And below this piece of tape, you can actually you click this to set up your extender manually. And you can also hide your extender's SSID, although it just adds another unnecessary step because then you have to input the SSID every time you want to connect to it on a new device. But if I click this, you just have to input everything manually. And one thing to take note of is right here after you select your wireless network that you want to repeat, it creates a new SSID here. You could pick anything you want, but by default, it puts your regular, uh, your main network's SSID, and then following that is BOEAC2. So you could change that to whatever you really want. I just leave it at the default so I could tell which one is the main network and which is the repeater's network. And after doing all of that, it does a connection test to make sure it can connect successfully to your main network, your host network that you're going to be repeating. And if all goes well, it should say success. Yep, it's successful. So there it shows you your original host network's SSID, your extender's SSID, and the security type. So let's click apply now. And it's going to restart the system which takes a few moments and yep, we're disconnected from it now and the LED lights are most likely going to be flashing on and off as it restarts okay I got a piece of tape on the lens uh, once we restart it brings us to this screen it shows you the uptime the revision of the firmware we're running the runtime code version what mode it's in now on the box, this originally claimed to, to, can, that it can act as a repeater, uh, a wireless bridge, or a, uh, an actual router, an access point. Because it shows here in the mode, universal repeater, but I didn't see any way to actually manually change this from repeater mode to, uh, to an actual, just a, an access point slash router mode. I'll have to figure that out in the manual. And then it shows you your new SSID of your repeater, uh, the channel number, security, and any connected clients if you're connected to it. Okay, and if you go over here and click WPS settings, you can enable WPS, although like, once again it is a security hole. It's actually very easy to hack into WPS and find the passphrase, the pass key. So I'll disable that for now, just for, to be on the safe side. And if you go over to advanced settings, you have a few different sub-menus, but the main menu brings up this page here. And you could play around and change some things like the beacon interval, the fragment threshold, the data rate, the channel width, preamble, the broadcasting of the SSID, and a few other features. And you can also do MAC filtering on here, which is nice. So I guess if you uh, want to filter out MAC addresses from connecting to this extender, you can do so. Let's click System Settings, see what that is. Alright, you can change the password of the actual extender's configuration page, the management IP address, which in this case, it's 192.168.1.2, but on the, the extender itself it says 2.2, so that can create some problems. And if we go to the configuration page, we have, uh, we could back up and restore the settings and also restore the factory defaults. You can upgrade the firmware and even reboot it. Now one thing you want to take note of is that the internet speeds are slower on this uh, repeater. Alright, let's do a test. This is connected to my host network. 10 megabits per second, and that's on Wi-Fi. When I'm connected, hardwired into the network, I get about 20 megabits per second. Alright, let's see how fast the upload speed is on Wi-Fi connected to my host network. 
I get about four to five megabits per second on average. Let's connect to the repeater now. I'm only getting about five megabits to six megabits per second download and five megabits upload. So unfortunately slower internet speeds are a trade-off you're going to have to be willing to make to be able to at least connect to the internet in places that you otherwise wouldn't be able to connect to your main router. But now I have Wi-Fi over in this part of this room and I can use this computer down here, this old HPE PC which does not have a wireless card using the wireless bridge functionality of the repeater. So overall a pretty good deal for $20.